Hey everybody, we're going to do a video today on a Wi-Fi smart wall switch. I got this on uh, eBay or Amazon, one of the two. It's a Wi-Fi smart switch based off of the, uh, the Sonoff switch that you see everywhere. Looks like they took the chip and put it inside a housing. Uh, it gets shipped in this nice little box. You know, it's a... Uh, Nothing special. We have the instructions on how to connect it using an app called Smart Life. Let's see, let's go to step one. We'll look at this before we open up the uh, switch to look at it. So the first thing, let's see, uh, here we are, page one. I should have known that. And it looks like the uh, specs on this are uh, 100 to 240, 50, 60 hertz. Each, each relay looks like it holds up to about 1100 watts. 2.4 gigahertz. Oh, the top, okay, that's the switching voltage. And then the input voltage again, 100 to 240. And you use the uh, Smart Life app. Then they take you through all of the uh, configuration in the app. If you need this for some reason, you can pause it. I'll try to go at a reasonable pace. All right, so now let's look at the switch. I send a pair of screws for installing. Put it in this nice little foam bag. There's the back of the switch. See, it's model YZWA03. The uh, three, I believe, refers to the switches. So there's three switches, and that means this is uh, a three gang. They have single gang, uh, where there's one. Looks like the mold's a little crusty in the corner, but this has uh, three outputs on it. Power comes in line and neutral. They even say that the, you don't necessarily need the ground, so I'm wondering if the ground's even hooked up inside. Because you have line and neutral coming in, and then you have three separate line outs. These are um, controlled off a relay. Now this is a three pole switch, but it's not a three way. So I guess you could say this is a uh, three pole single throw. Three pole single? Uh, maybe I'm not saying that right, but you know what I mean. You can control three different things with it. So to open it up, to see the inside, uh, they make it relatively easy. There are four little catches, and we'll just get the spudger in there. There we go. There's one corner. There's the other corner. Once that's out, it just peels right off. They have a just a piece of plexiglass with some paint or something on the back. It's pretty cool. I haven't hooked it up yet, so I'm not sure what the uh, light looks like. We'll do that too. So here's the inside. These are, I assume there has to be some type of membrane, not membrane, but um, some something to sense, like capacitive sensing. So I'm expecting to see something like that in here. So, let's see, let's get it in a position where I don't have to hold it while I do this. Now I do see some screws. There's a couple screws in here. But I think they just hold the bottom in. I think this might... Yep, there's some double-sided tape. And it looks like a connector. Yep. All right. So, ah, there's the brain. All right. So here's the back of that board. The way these are cut out makes me think there is some sort of capacitive sensing element under here. I'm trying to see these these pieces here. They do look like they're glass, they actually look cut. 
where's that silver? I can't. No, that's silver foil. That was glass, just the way it's reflecting. Let's see. Oh, we have a plastic. That's probably not supposed to be there. Let's see what we have. Oh, that's a diffuser. Okay. All right. So here's the LEDs that light there for the backlight. Right. Right there on the edge. And then underneath. So I'm going to see how far I can peel that diffuser back without wrecking it. Oh, it's just on the edge. That's good. So yeah, there's some sort of... It looks like it's part of the lens, but it looks like there's something underneath. You can see where that trace goes up right here. That trace. There's one in each of the center. That's where the uh, capacitive sense is. In fact, now that I look at it even more, okay, let's spin it around. And let's zoom you guys in so you can see what I'm seeing. These little six pin SOT23 chips. One, two, three. They are, I'm pretty sure those are touch sensor chips. I recently just got a bag of these and they uh, they can be set to latch on or latch off or just, you know, control logic input uh, with a, an antenna, which is what that is here. So these three are sensing the touch and then they're sending it to this chip here to this uh, you know, ESP type module, so the Wi-Fi module. Let's see, T Y W E three S. I will, uh, I'll put a link in the uh, description down there if I uh, if I find the data sheet on that. We can see this is just one of those modules. The uh, brain and everything are inside that can. Trying to see if there's any other. No, it's just a uh, transistors. These are probably for turning the LEDs on to correspond with uh, the on and off. Then you have the brain that goes through to that header there, and this header is going to go to the power supply, and the uh, also handles the output for to the relays, which are inside here. So next, let's open that up and get those get that board out and see what's doing there I want to see what kind of relays are in here because it would be really cool to make a, a three-way version it's not really as important with the Wi-Fi control but I don't know I just kinda of want to I would have to set something up so each side knew the status of the other side oh, put my hand in front of it Oh, okay, so the board's loose now. So let's just get that one out. And yeah, that board's just going to pop out. We'll look at the housing first. Ooh, it's got like rust or something in it. Sometimes I wonder, maybe this was painted or something. Hmm. Like I said on the back on the corners first I thought it was cracked and I realized it's just a uh, the molds getting crusty there the plastics good though so anyway I'll set that over here and here is the relay module there are three relays one for each channel for each uh, switch and they are not real big. 1100 watts. I'm kind of surprised they're rating these at 1100 watts. Something tells me that's uh, wishful So thinking. there's the control for the relays. Each one of those drives the relay and some snubber 
resistors. There's uh, a voltage regulator right here. I'm trying to see what the number is. Can't really make it out, but let's see. The capacitor is a 16, so it's probably a 5 volt because there's a 10 volt here and a 16 volt here, so it's 12 volts and 5 volts out, I'm guessing. And there's some sort of feature here. They have a jumper, just a zero ohm resistor, kind of haphazardly soldered across from here to here, skipping. The other pad it looks like so that must be for setting some kind of feature maybe normally closed or who knows all right but let's start where the power comes in there's our yeah here's our neutral and our line that comes in let's see ground in the middle just has a uh, just a capacitor so that's just for noise this thing isn't grounded at all, but it's a light switch, so whatever. So then, um, let's see, you have powers coming in. There's a little fuse right here. So let's see, am I looking at this right? I guess that might be a thermistor, maybe? I'm not quite sure. Let's see, because the power comes in, it goes across here. Oh, this is line. Okay, that makes way more sense. All right, so power comes in here, goes through the fuse into that bridge right here. And then neutral as well comes in and goes to the bridge through here. Yeah, through the top. So this is kind of acting like a via as well, so... You have AC going in, DC coming out. There's a 4.7 at 400. And then this is probably, this is a voltage regulator. It's taking it from the uh, 150 or so down to 12. Yeah, it must be a uh, buck converter because there's an inductor here. Big old inductor. And that ends up in a... 10 mic at 50 volt so yeah that makes sense so 110 to 2 whatever in then that buck converter knocks it down to 12 which also goes to that 5 and that 5 volt regulator is for driving the uh, TYW E3S and when it's inside it plugs together like that and then it waits for you to touch the top through the faceplate. So let's put this back inside, get the screws in, and hook up uh, power to it. Right, so I wired up a power cord to it temporarily, and just to give you an idea, on, on, on. Let's see if you can see the light better. There you go. And just so you can see that it's working, Get the meter. All right, so I will go from neutral to 
let's see, it is three at the bottom and one at the top. So if I go to three, there we are, and go to two. And one, they all work. This thing's pretty cool. So now I'm going to go and install it uh, so I can control some lights with it. Alexa, turn off the kitchen. Alexa, turn on the island. Alexa, turn off the island. Alexa, turn off the kitchen. So if you have any questions, or if you want to see me take apart any other kind of smart home stuff like this, uh, please leave it in the comments. And uh, as usual, thank you for watching.